leaving Northwest Iowa. Spent uh, just short of two weeks stay here. Uh, had a good visit with my mom and my sister and her family came, so I was able to see them and my aunt. Had a good stay, but we're having to leave a little early to get to Des Moines. Brian's dad is having health issues and we're wanting to get down there as soon as possible to see him. So we're hoping for a good trip down about four and a half, five hour trip in the RV. <laughs> so at least uh, it's a sunny day, no rain. Man, you can really hear all the locusts. We're not used to that. It's been a while since we've been back to Iowa. And here we are, we're back in Des Moines. Uh, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. We had a really hard time deciding uh, if we really wanted to talk about this, uh, make a video about it. But Michelle and I started realizing some things that we thought, you know, it's kind of important. If anybody out there, if you are trying to decide whether to do this full-time RV lifestyle, these are some things that you uh, you need to know. Michelle's dad passed away a couple years ago. She really didn't get that much time with her dad. Right, I wasn't working remotely. It wasn't an option at that time. And I used up my vacation. Um, we did get to spend a couple weeks with him. But it was the last few days, weeks of the last few days that was not there with him when he passed. But I still am very thankful that I did get the time that I had with him. Right. We but had to, if this if we had this lifestyle back then I would have had more time with them, for sure. So that's just it. And then being here for my dad, that's when we really started to realize that. I was able to be there for my dad all week long during the week. I had my work all caught up. So I was able to spend all this time with him. I think that's when it really hit us that how thankful and how grateful I am that I was able to spend all that time with my dad, be there for him. Every day that I would come there in the morning, first thing in the morning, he, I'd come in the room and he'd see me and he'd have this huge smile on his face. He, you know, he knew, not just that I was there, but that he knew that he was gonna be taken care of and uh, he needed move he knew that I would move him every second if I had to and uh, that really meant a lot even though it's hard for you to see your parent in that situation I tell you it means the world to be there for him I haven't seen you for so long <laughs> oh, God, man, I love you love you Ooh. Missed you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, come on. Come on, dang it. You gotta do it. <laughs> All right. As long as you enjoy <laughs> yourself. That's the main thing. Yeah. He's, He's my buddy. Remember, and everybody at your stories call me Little Richie? Yeah. Let <laughs> uh, me see them pikes again, huh? <laughs> God, are you working out? <laughs> Must be that coffee. <laughs> yeah, so. We're having our coffee day, aren't we, Dad? <laughs> yep. Yeah. With Michelle Paul. Yeah. She having her coffee. There it is. Richie Paul got his <laughs> coffee. Brian Paul don't get coffee. He's just gonna go home and enjoy life as normal for the rest of his time. I'm going to pick him up right now. Ready to go home? Now that we're in Des Moines, I uh, take Michelle downtown so that she can go into the office. Whenever we come back to Des Moines, it's an agreement between her and her employer that she has to go in the office. Since we've been here, I have to take her down to the office and then drive back out where I'm taking care of my dad during the day. It's in-home hospice, uh, except 
currently right now all we have is mainly all the equipment in there and every once in a while um, someone from hospice comes in. I'm kind of numb right now where I can't believe what's going to be coming, you know? I'm sure there's a lot of you that's uh, went through this. It's pretty tough. I'm very thankful, very thankful that at least, you know, I get the time with my dad. Well, here comes Michelle. Hello. Hi. Sunday morning. Today I figured I would come out and get the Blackstone Grill out and uh, cook some bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs always sounds good to me on a Sunday morning because that's what my dad and I used to cook uh, when I was young. And uh, we'd always have our bacon sandwiches or bacon and eggs on Sunday mornings. And since he's not in the greatest hell, uh, obviously got him on my mind all the time. So we're going to pop out the Blackstone Grill. I was going to say whip up some bacon and eggs, but there's nothing to whip up. for breakfast and we thought since we're keeping it real we even show you what we look like in the mornings <laughs> right honey change of plans all right this morning I wanted to talk a little bit about the RV life when you go back to where you used to live to visit family or wherever your family may be sometimes it's not all fun and visiting sometimes there's health problems my father he's doing in-home hospice but with that said I've been uh, taking care of him through the week. He needs somebody that can actually move him a lot uh, because he's always so uncomfortable. I feel very fortunate to be able to do that. Every once in a while he takes a nap. Sometimes it's short-lived. There for a while it was only every five to 15 minutes he would wake back up and he'd be uncomfortable and needed to be moved. I think I mentioned it before. Michelle, her job is located here in Des Moines, Iowa. So I have to run her downtown and then uh, backtrack back the other way to where my dad's at. 20 minutes downtown, drop her off. Another 20, 25 minutes to go back to where uh, my dad's at. Luckily, we were in Iowa when we got the news about my dad. We were up in Northwest Iowa visiting uh, my mother-in-law, Michelle's mom. Thankfully, we were only two days away from when we were planning on coming to Des Moines, so we still got a lot of time with Michelle's mom. I guess, you know, just we'll be prepared. If it ever happens and you need to get home, you can always check with the campgrounds, see if you can leave your RV there. Sometimes they have storage. Sometimes they may just let you leave it where it's at if you're booked up so far in advance. Or you can take it to a storage place, you know, and take a flight to wherever you're going. Or if you got time, you can drive your RV, obviously, to wherever you're going. Bad thing in this situation is we don't know how long we're going to be here. And there are no Thousand Trails campgrounds in the state of Iowa, let alone right here in the Des Moines area. I think there's a Passport America and a KOA outside of Des Moines which puts us over an hour away from where I need to be with my dad. It would call for a lot of driving. This wouldn't work out. The price that we would be paying there would be more or equivalent to what we're able to get it for here close by at Sailorville Lake, an Army Corps of Engineers campground. Another thing is they're booked during the summer. Every single weekend, every one of their sites is booked. They do have some campgrounds, one called Acorn Valley. That is a first come, first serve, so you can't even make reservations there. The RV Life 
has its pros and its cons, just like your normal sticks and bricks life. Sometimes you gotta find a way to make things happen, but there's always an option. We have not ran into not one situation yet that we have not been able to come up with a solution. Probably another 15 minutes from where my dad's at. It's really tough to see him going through this. Just wanted to share our own personal experience. Here. Dad wants to say hi to you. Go ahead. Hi, Michelle. Richie Paul says hi. Hello. We get, came outside to get some fresh air and there's some field across the road here. It's got some cattle. Dad kind of reminds him of when he was growing up on the farm. Hard to see, isn't it? The cattle kind of went and hid though. There were a bunch of them out there. Now they went and hid, didn't they, Dad? Got too hot for them. Is that why they usually do that? They take mm -hmm. off when it gets hot? Where do they normally go when it gets hot? Water. In the water? This farm boy would know. You like them grapes, don't you? Mm -hmm. Remember when we used to uh, have all those nuts on the table? We sit at the table and crack those nuts with a nutcracker. Which nut was your favorite? Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts? You, me, and Mom went and picked hazelnuts and rafting. There's a tree down by that river bridge. Well, I've been a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> stopped here at the uh, funeral home and some of you I'm sure probably have experienced this already it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do in your life is um, the whole thing you know taking care of a parent when you know they're terminally ill got to realize life goes on and um, I tell you if we weren't doing this full-time RV life honestly I don't know that I would have been able to to have all that time I did with my dad to help take care of him it's something for you to think about if you do are you going to be able to work remotely or maybe you don't have to work maybe you're retired Does your parents live or any loved ones for that matter live so far away from where you currently live that if you're in an rv remotely in all these different places it enables you to drive to wherever that family member is and stay there and not have to worry about time getting a hotel room and all that cost adding up yeah, you might have campsite fees if you're not in an area that you can utilize your Thousand Trails membership, because if you have that, then you eliminate that cost. Not a subject anybody really wants to talk about, and we really debated whether to even talk about this, but 